salutations friends welcome back to my channel today we are going to have a long review a chit chat i'm not gonna have it be too long but i realize when i'm talking about this price point of fragrances i tend to ramble but i think it's important to talk about this because we're not just reviewing a fragrance like oh it smells like orris and sandalwood and it lasts on your skin for six hours Sometimes fragrances are so expensive and are, you know, a little bit polarizing that a discussion needs to be had. And especially if I'm reviewing a fragrance for you guys and I spent hundreds of dollars on a bottle of perfume, I like to let you guys know why. So this is going to be a review of Raja Parfums Nua, but I'm going to talk a little bit about this fragrance as well because this has been on my must-buy list for at least five years, probably seven or eight years. Yeah, this has been uh, 2017, so a while. Uh, it's been on been on my must buy list for a while. So, I really want to chat about this fragrance, talk about my expectations for this house. I know I've talked about it before, but specifically relating to this fragrance because this fragrance, in my opinion, is one of the more um, least cohesive of the Raja Parfums fragrances. It doesn't fit in with the opulent, old world, glamorous compositions of the house. It's a little bit more lighter and fresher and atmospheric and effervescent and chic and effortless fragrances. But I love it and I bought it and it's expensive and I wanted to review it for you guys. But because we are talking about a $1,050 bottle of perfume, and because it doesn't quite fit in into the, in my opinion, the Raja Parfums family DNA, I wanted to talk to you guys about why I enjoy this fragrance so much, why it's been on my wish list for the longest period of time, and why I think this was something that I needed to have in my clip. Like I said before, this is a long video. So I am going to talk first and tell you guys why I love this. It's gonna get a little personal, a little chatty, but I have a timestamp for you guys below if you just want to jump to the quick portion of the review. If you wanna know the note breakdown, how it smells on the skin and performance. So that way you guys don't have to sit through like 35 minutes of me chatting. So there's going to be a little timestamp for you below if you just want to jump to that portion of the video and you don't have to sit through a long chat. It comes down to this very polarizing luxury niche fragrance house. People like to know the reviewer's point of view on the house. I am a fan of the House of Raja. I collect the House of Raja. I have never been sent anything from the brand. The only free thing from Raja I ever got was a friend of mine gave me a partial bottle of Danger. That doesn't mean that I have anything against free bottles as long as the influencer is honest and upfront about their partnership in free bottles. I do free bottle reviews all the time. I'm very blessed to do that. But Raja have, themselves has never reached out to me, and that's fine. I am perfectly capable of purchasing my own bottles. But I know when it comes down to this house specifically, people have very real opinions, and rightfully so, because this is a very expensive house. So if it is important to you for you to hear a review from somebody who purchased this bottle, this was a purchase. So I purchased this bottle. I am a fan and a collector of the House of Raja, but I don't blindly purchase every single fragrance from this house. This is a fragrance that I have worn for years. I have had decants of this fragrance for years. Like Britannia, this was a fragrance that I have worn and loved and craved. And like Britannia, this is a holy grail of mine. Now, the thing with Nuwa is this is, is I don't mean to kick my tripod, excuse me, as I kind of get a little bit more comfy. As I talk about this fragrance and as I break down this scent and people are gonna be leaving me comments being like, why are you talking just review the fragrance? Uh, I don't think that you guys need me to break down the notes of the scent and talk to you guys about how long it's last on the skin because first and foremost, this is an over thousand dollar bottle of perfume full retail price. You should not in any way, even for a $50 bottle of perfume, listen to somebody that you do not know on the internet and purchase something based on me saying that it smells like sandalwood and vetiver 
and go out and buy it. You need to try things on your skin first. Um, do not blindly purchase things based off of internet strangers. Secondly, when it comes down to very expensive bottles of perfume, it is more than just the way that it smells because you can easily find things much cheaper, 20th of the price that perform better and might even smell better depending on what your taste in fragrance is. So just because I'm sitting here saying that it smells powdery and light and beautiful, doesn't mean that you can't find something powdery, light and beautiful at Target or at Walmart or, you know, anywhere else for way cheaper. The reason why I wanted to have a very long, very in-depth conversation about this fragrance is first and foremost, this is a birthday gift to myself. So obviously, hi, happy birthday, I'm 38. Um, secondly, is because since this fragrance doesn't fit in to the cohesive DNA of Raja, I wanted to talk about why I thought this was worth investing and adding to my collection, why it took me so long to purchase, and why I deeply, deeply enjoy this. You guys know I like to chat, so. First things first, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the notes off of my phone. These notes are from Lucky Scent, so just, they're not all of the notes, but they are the most uh, marketed notes. They're the most, the key notes, so to speak. You have bergamot and lemon, black currant buds. You have immortal jasmine, osmanthus, rose, elangling, ambergris, birch, black pepper, cystus, clove, cumin, oak moss, orris, patchouli, storax, and vetiver. I do believe the original first formulation was more cumin dominant, and I believe that they toned that down. And I could be incorrect. I think this was originally the formulation that Roja wanted. Now, first and foremost, the reason why I don't think this fits in to the Roja Dove DNA, specifically the more shared feminine fragrances, is that those scents to me smell more timeless, old world, like Hollywood glamour, ambery, beautiful, dense, and decadent. Fragrances that have deep powders, complex florals, beautiful woody and ambery notes, and they just come together to be just gorgeous. Now with the House of Raja, I do not expect ingenuity or creativity. I don't expect a new, 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 no, no. I expect the best. Perfectly blended, perfectly crafted. It has to smell like the highest version of whatever composition I'm smelling. So that's what I expect. So if it's something fresh and sophisticated and effortless, it has to be the highest elevation of a fresh, sophisticated and elegant fragrance. And that is what Miwa is to me. Now, the, the notes in here that really shine on my skin and made this a must have has to be the, the marriage, the, the blending, the balance between a very dry jasmine and a very dry orris. This is a dry scent. So in a lot of cases, powders can smell conflicting and I love powders. It's a very polarizing note, orris, iris, um, certain notes that can kind of mimic that stale lipstick, baby powders, baby whites, talcum powders, a compact makeup. Uh, people love it, people hate it. I love it. If it smells like grandma's 50 year old lipstick that she wore on her wedding day and her she's celebrating her 60th wedding anniversary, I get excited. I love the way that smells, but it can be a little off putting for some people and I respect that. What I love about Nuwa is it has this balance of powder that is just dry, just, just there, just there where it could go a little bit too too stale, but it doesn't smell like dental office. It doesn't smell medicinal. It doesn't smell too, too like stale lipstick, stale over processed. It's like this beautiful kind of almost buttery, but dry orris. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And it is center stage but it is not overpowering all the other notes. Instead, it is beautifully tamed by Jasmine. 
Now, jasmine I've talked about before a lot. You guys know I love jasmine. Jasmine can smell like most any note out there. I feel like I could say this about anything. A little chameleon. It could smell a variety of different ways, specifically the style of jasmine, the type of note that you're using, what it's used as. But there are types of distinctive nuances that jasmine can smell like that are tamed and I love when those are celebrated. And I just talked about it in the Nightingale, uh, the Dixit and Zach fragrance. That was my other birthday present to myself, where that fragrance really super celebrated all those uh, beautiful kind of more challenging aspects to the night blooming jasmine, the jasmine sambuck note. The, the parts of that note that fragrances usually are trying to tame, that celebrates and it's gorgeous. I love a drier, raw, or dirtier jasmine. And that's what this is. That dry jasmine with that osmanthus and that immortal, and that little bit of cumin in there, a little bit, you know, a little bit of there, just with this beautiful, dominant auris is just breathtaking. And that is what I expect from Raja. And I've talked about this also before, is that my skin is like a perfect canvas for fragrances. The, the pH, my body chemistry loves very expensive fragrances. But I remember wearing this all the time and it just kind of uplifting my mood and smelling amazing. So I've had decants of this and I've gotten decants of this before, um, like I purchased decants of this other places or done swaps for decants of this. And I just remember loving this and just never getting around to buying it. It's one of these fragrances that obviously I'm talking to you guys about why I bought it because it smells so beautiful, but I kind of want to, want to let you guys know why I bought it because this is one of the fragrances that I think smells the best on me out of, out of everything, out of, out of everything that I own. I own over a thousand bottles of perfume and I've tried double or triple what I own. So out of thousands, thousands and thousands and thousands of bottles of perfume that I've tried on my skin, this is one of them that has been the most memorable and has smelled the best. And a lot of that has to do with my body chemistry and a lot of that has to do with how perfectly blended this is because I've smelled fragrances that on a strip smell near identical to this near identical to this. And so what I'm saying is, is with the House of Raja, with this particular fragrance, you're getting a scent that is not new, you know? You're not getting something that's newly created. But what you're getting with this fragrance specifically is balance. And with these more effortless fragrances, with fragrances that are really relying on quality and again just a balance it it really matters like a, a single grain of scan, sand scanned sand can tip the scale so specifically what this is is the dryness so like the fact that there are florals in here that could be sweeter and richer and juicier it pulls in a way that you're getting there more flavor qualities of them. And what I mean by that is when I talk about citruses, when I talk about like when citrus fragrances, you smell citrus fragrances, you know, you when you eat a lemon, you get that citric acid where your face kind of makes that, that silly face, like that, like that face. Yeah, yeah, that, that face. But then you can have lemon cake, lemon cookies. Uh, you can have lemon piccata, the lemon flavor. So when you smell something in a fragrance, you can have the brightness and the sparkly aldehydic qualities of citruses, or you can smell lemon. With florals like ylang ylang and rose and sometimes orange blossom and jasmines, there's more than just like, here's this floral. Like jasmine can be dry, rose can be fruity and jammy, orange blossom, all of these like Ylang Ylang can be creamy. There are different nuances that these florals can have. 
Now, what these florals have in here isn't so much the texture, and by the texture, I mean like when you bite into a lemon, it's almost like the, the, the sourness, it's the flavor, so like the, the, the cookie aspect of it. I'm horrible at describing things, so welcome to my channel. You're getting just the smell. You're getting the aromatic, but very light and atmospheric quality. So you're getting a touch of rose in the background, a touch of ylang ylang. These little slight things that add a lot of beautiful complexity, but don't add a texture or a weight. What adds a texture is the dryness from the jasmine, a dryness from the ores, the powder. You get a beautiful woodiness. You get some gorgeous spices. The aromatics in here are neutral, borderline on slightly warm. You get something that has a bit of a, a weight to it while still being very light and cozy and ethereal. It's just stunning and that that coming together like that is a quality of ingredients and a perfectly balanced and crafted composition. And even when I was smelling this fragrance on other people, it still smelled amazing experience. It's just beautiful. Very easy to wear, very gorgeous. If you like complex fragrances, but you don't like heavier, richer, and more ambery, woody, denser floral compositions. If you want something that's slightly more modern, not a modern composition, but slightly more modern, and you like those skin scents that just smell like sexy skin, glamorous, effortless, sophisticated, and easy, this is worth checking out. It's really beautiful. But those styles of fragrances aren't usually what you find from the House of Raja, which is why I think a lot of people find this to be so polarizing. And if your body chemistry kind of throws off the balance a little bit, I don't think that this is going to be worth the investment because you can find this style of perfumery, this composition, um, much cheaper. But for me specifically, when I smelled this fragrance, on my skin, I was completely floored. It's that not even based on those fragrances, but everything and even fragrances that I haven't tried. This is one of the best smelling fragrances on my skin that I think. And my opinion is the most important, important one. And so when I smell this on my skin, I smell a dryness, which I love. I smell a balance of two, two things that I adore, an untamed version of a floral that I love, the dry, dirtier, raw jasmine, and this beautiful, just orris that's on the cusp of being polarizing. And these aromatics that come together to create something ethereal and elegant and effortless and sophisticated and living in the swamp, when you want complexity, sometimes it's hard to wear those more denser, deeper, richer fragrances. And so fragrances like this just work so well. And that is why this is like a holy grail of mine. Here's the review portion of this. Obviously I talked first, reviewed now, but obviously if you click to this point, hey, welcome to the review point. I did my long diatribe. So I've already mentioned the notes, but the big notes in here specifically, you have bergamot and lemon in the opening. You're gonna get a little bit of sparkle from those, not so much acidity. It's gonna open with a tiny bit of brightness, but bam, you're gonna get this dry orris and jasmine with a little bit of immortal and osmanthus. You're gonna get some woods. The cumin's gonna be a little bit more present, but not overpowering. You're gonna get more orris and jasmine than anything. The jasmine is going to be the kind of dirtier, drier, raw jasmine, not the creamier or muskier jasmine that you see in more modern or more designer women's fragrances. And I do love those, 
but this is a more, I would say, masculine leaning jasmine that pairs beautifully with this kind of rooty, dry orris note. As you wear it on your skin, the longer you wear it, it's gonna get lighter and a little bit more atmospheric. This is a very cozy, chic, soft fragrance that kind of kisses your skin in a way that's very sexy, very light, very ethereal, uh, slightly warm and aromatic, but you're really going to be playing off light powders, soft aromatics, and again, a beautiful jasmine. At the end of the day, this is a fragrance that you've smelled before, but the way that this house has balanced all of these notes and hasn't shied away from the more challenging aspects of some of these notes is something that I really enjoy and appreciate. This is definitely, I would say, a shared fragrance. Any gender can wear this. Obviously, you can wear whatever you want, but I would say this is a more mature, slightly feminine leaning shared fragrance but obviously anyone can wear whatever you want but if you're wondering what side of the fragrance aisle you would see this the more powdery fragrances i find to be more marketed to women if you are so inclined to wonder if this is more masculine or more feminine it is shared but it is more on the powdery side powder more powdery side there we go when it comes down to longevity, I get about six to eight hours and projection and sillage is mine. At the end of the day, this is a very expensive fragrance. So deciding if this is worth the amount of money is not for me to say, it's for you. Uh, normally I say, yeah, this is what I think it's worth it. But when we get into the four digits or the, the mid to high three digits, I, I really just can't sit here and say, yeah, it's worth it. It is, that is a lot of money. But for me, this was most definitely worth it. And I'm so happy to finally have it in my collection. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have tried this fragrance and you agree or disagree with my opinions and review, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, as, and as always, there we go. I hope you guys are all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I will see you next time. Bye.